How did you first hear that Bill Cosby was going to be released? Oh, this morning when I got up and rolled out of bed, my friend Stephen Lenahan, he gave me a telephone call and he told me, he said, I have, I have some bad news. And I was bracing for like, you know, a hurricane or something. And he was like, you know, Cosby's out of prison. And I was so, it felt, I felt like, first of all, really so angry, mm -hmm. so angry. Uh, and second, I felt uh, like I was kicked in the stomach by, in, in my abdomen by some psychic blow. You say you felt like you were kicked in your stomach, but you know, they're saying this is a procedural issue and that's why he was released. How do you feel about that? I'm angry. I'm angry they let him out over a procedural. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's basically all I have to say. I can't get into the legalese of, about it. I can only speak from my heart and say that the statute of limitations is not fair. It's not, it's, it's, it's just not fair. There are people who are they're falling on both sides, but some people are rejoicing and saying he deserves, you know, it's, it's only fair that he gets out. What do you say to those people? Oh, I say to those people, you have not been raped by them. Mm. I, have been, I was raped by Bill Cosby, and I know that uh, it, it changed my life forever. And uh, that's why my heart goes out to all the women that started me to after I first came out on, the, on your show. I, I just think people are ignorant. There were so many facts, you know. I mean, I had Polaroids of the guy in a bathrobe. How does that still affect you? Well, today I have to admit I was forlorn. I was down just not, normally I'm talking mm -hmm. up a storm to my husband, Rocky this, Rocky that. I, I couldn't even, I, I basically could, didn't want to look in the mirror. It was, um, it's just a, a very unjust verdict. What would you say to the other women who clearly are going through things tonight also? What would you say to the other women? I would say, sisters, we still have to fight this. We have to fight any injustice that's bestowed upon a young girl or a young boy. We have to get together to change these rules and the laws of the statute of limitation. If there weren't the statute of limitation, He'd be, in, he'd be in jail right now for much longer than two and a half years. There was mounting evidence from many, many women. But once again, they go back and say, it has nothing to do with the crime. It has to do with the procedure. And what does that say to you about the justice system? I think the justice system is really f I'm sorry for being so rude, but it's just to me, it's like devastating that the, after all the pain and anguish, that these women went through, myself included, Beverly Johnson. I know they're feeling the same way I am. I know they're mad. I know they're, I know they're disappointed. And uh, sisters, we gotta hang in there. That's what I wanna say to them. Have you had a chance to talk to anyone else? Oh, yes. Beverly Johnson, my friend. You talked today? Uh, yes. Oh, and what was that conversation uh, it like? Was, it's, it was private. It was private but she, I, she wouldn't like me saying uh, what our conversation was about. I don't have her permission. Mm -hmm. But she's a great woman and she, she too ha had to fight him off and she got away, she got away unscathed. Mm -hmm. But she, she's still mad as hell. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, you guys were in Tahoe when this happened, correct? Yes. You still remember that vividly? 1982, Reno, Nevada. You still remember it vividly? Uh, I remember the way the curtains were blowing inside this room. I remember being extremely knocked out by this pill he gave me and dizzy and lightheaded and, and airheaded. I, I couldn't basically get up out of bed. And normally I think I can control myself and I, I've, I've always got like the upper hand as far as sobriety. I wish that I was sober as, as I am today and th that I wasn't that it was he still drinking alcohol mm -hmm. back in the day. What we saw today was just. You think back to that time, and, and then as you saw that man walking on his lawn today, what went through your head? If you could say something to him, what would you say? Oh, I would say, don't be so happy with yourself, buddy, because you know what you did to me. Hmm. Let me show you something. So we want to thank this entire team. We want to thank Mrs. Cosby, her family. Did you have a chance to see any of this? I watched it. Uh, I watched the news all day today. 
Bill Cosby didn't speak for himself. He didn't speak out loud how his experience was. He didn't apologize once again to all the victims. Uh, where is his wife? Uh, you know, who are these hanger, hangers honors around him? I would just, I would say to him personally, you've got a whole lot of nerve coming out and smiling and, sh and giving peace signs. What do you hope he says? I'm sorry. I, w I would hope that Mr. Cosby would say I'm sorry, but that's never going to happen. He's a psychopath. He never reached out to you? No. Never? No. Did you get a lot of pushback after you first came out? Were there people who didn't believe you or wanted to be on his side? Oh, the pushback that, that came out after, after I was like one of the first women that came out was uh, negative, negative, negative. I had people calling me all sorts of names and uh, called me liar. The, the attorney even called me a liar, Marty Singer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I, I won my court case. Felicia Rashad tweeted earlier today that justice had finally been served. That's his wife from The Cosby Show. Um, what's your response to that? Well, I really admire and respect Felicia Rashad, but today she needed, she had backwards thinking because after she came out and said that, she then came out and said, I support the women. Do you think she believes that he did the things that he did? Without a doubt, she knew this guy was off because you can't work next to someone and not hear the stories or hear, hear, hear the cadence in his voice when, when women walk by. You know, there were some people that suggested now that this could open the door and there was concern at first that this could open the door for Harvey Weinstein. What do you think of all that kind of talk? I think this is tragic talk. It's, tragi it's tragic that they, they could actually think that he could get out. And I think if Harvey Weinstein had the same uh, mistake happen with his uh, accusations, that he, that he would be walking the streets, I would say I would have to move to another country at this point. It makes you want to leave the country, what's happening? Well, I'd never leave my children. But it, uh, yes, it just makes me really disgusted with the system. Did he ever say anything to you about what might have happened? No. I want to ask you, when you were here, and you first began to speak about the Cosby situation, it was very emotional for you. How long did it take before you could really deal with the trauma that came back up associated with this rape? I'm still dealing with the trauma that, that's come up, but after, after the trauma did come up the very first time, I was not a pleasant woman to live with. Ask my husband, you know, I would have these uh, mood swings that I'd go in and out of like, just like being a spaz. It always took me back to that fateful night in 1982 in Reno, Nevada. <sighs> I just don't have any words to describe the pain it's inflicted upon me. Take me back to the time when Andrea Constant first came out and she was actually fighting her legal fight against Cosby and what you remember and how it inspired you. I remember when it first came out in the in the New York Times article, Andrea Constance's case, and my husband looked at me and he knew he knew that I was going to do something about it. You know, we both said it's time to tell, it's time now to co come back out and say something and may the truth reveal itself. How hard was that for your husband to also know this and know the hurt that this man inflicted on you? I, uh, you know, I, I was I was crazy back in those days. I was really, my, my mood swings would go up and down off the chart, you know, be laughing one minute and then I'd be just really angry the next. I was having a hard time with it, Kevin. Mm. It's hard when your, your spouse or your wife is, ha is going through the, this because it leaves him powerless. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he can do except hold my hand, which he has done. How are you today? Today, I am sober through the grace of God. I have a good, great family, a wonderful husband, two great children, two great stepchildren, a grandson. I'm very happy with my family. I never thought I'd be Granny Janny. So I'm fortunate and very blessed.